initiative and lead. And it turns out London is a fantastic place to hire designers. Um, they are they are an, an awesome crowd. Um, they have their own language, but it's a language of real precision and rigor. Um, and I love this, this this statement here. This is talking about unity in a composition. And if you read it, you'll see it's talking about it, very mathematical, very precise, measurable kinds of concepts. And it's talking about the balance between form and function, the idea that everything should, um, should have a purpose and should reflect its purpose. So we hired this team, and we set them uh, a slightly radical goal at the time. We said, we, we, we have this desktop, and it's a very popular desktop. Lots of people love it. Um, but we, want, we, we believe that the future looks like this diverse collection of form factors. So we want to have um, a user experience that spans a range of form factors, a desktop, but also a tablet and a phone. And in fact, um, we want a TV as well. Um, and so clearly those are all different form factors with different constraints, they, they need different interfaces, but they can be, we believe, part of one family. It was very controversial at the time. And what was even more controversial is that we realized as we, as we went through this process, as we realized how all the pieces need to fit together if you went through this process of, of sort of deduction and, and inspiration, um, uh, that we were going to have to move our desktop around a lot. Um, and the reason was because if you tried to stick with the old desktop, then it would force your tablet and phone into all kinds of crazy postures. So we said, screw it, we're going to move the desktop to where it needs to be for the future. And that turned out to be quite a deeply unpopular process. Um, but we did something interesting. Every, every week we, we would get in a bunch of people. They might be experts. We spent an amazing afternoon with Don Knuth. Um, who has a completely hacked up, customized, personalized Ubuntu desktop environment just sort of suited for him. But we realized that a lot of the things that he was expressing and other people who are like deep, deep, deep into code, um, they're all looking for similar things, right? How much real estate do I have? How much space do I have? How easy is it to move? How easy for, is it for me to understand where I'm at? And we found that um, beginners wanted similar sorts of things. Um, nevertheless, there's some sort of severe tension. On the one hand, we wanted things really easy. On the other hand, we wanted things really hard. Um, and um, every week, we would bring people in to benchmark how we're doing. Um, when we started this process, we realized very quickly that the desktop that we had four years ago sucked. It was great for us. We all loved it. But you put it down in front of anybody off the street, it was terrible. Today, we're in an interesting position. If you know Windows and you're confronted with a new desktop, Windows is the easiest. Ubuntu is the second easiest, and then Mac OS. And if you know Mac OS, then it's easier to switch to Ubuntu than it is to switch to, to Windows. So here we are in this interesting position. We have this UX that's, that's um, um, really proving itself in the laboratory. I mean, people actually respond to it. They want to take the CDs home. They want to get it. Um, uh, companies, Asus, HP, Lenovo, Dell, are shipping it um, in volume. Next year, 5% of the world's PCs will ship with Ubuntu pre-installed which is kind of amazing. Um, and Asus ran an experiment where they shipped half a million of them to Germany. Not, not a, 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 an easy market. And the return rates on Ubuntu were exactly the same as the return rates on Windows, which is the key indicator for OEMs who are looking to do this. Um, we had to move our desktop, because if we didn't, we'd end up where Windows 8 is, right? Where you have this shiny tablet interface, and you sit down, and you use it, and, and then you press the wrong button, and it slaps you in the face, and suddenly Windows 7 is back, right? And, and then you think, okay, this is familiar, and you're kind of getting into it, and whack, oh, wrong side of the face. And, and, and so, so we had to, to move the desktop around, but now that we are, we're in this great position um, to, to spread out across all of the form factors. So what did we, what did we build? Well, um, uh, you may have seen it, um, but we cleaned the whole thing up. Um, a lot of it is sort of familiar. We, we did some really interesting things. For example, apps have access to um, the indicators now. So for example, the music player can embed itself in here. I can just get some music going over here. Um, messaging apps can come in here. So your, your mail client, IRC client and things can just sort of embed themselves in here. Those of you who are stuck on Mac OS X will have to wait another couple of weeks for this feature. Um, we've had it for two or three years. Um, so what's the next challenge for us? Um, well, we've got this fantastic search environment that we, that we built, which gives me all of my files and so on. Hold on a sec. Let's just, let's just ease up on that. Um, So this is a sort of search environment that gives me instant access to all of my apps, all of my files, and so on. Um, it's pretty cool. If I, if I want to watch a movie, I can go see what's out there. 
and we can find a lot, bunch of Harry Potter on Amazon, um, uh, bits and bobs. Um, and we did this cool thing called the, the HUD, which is sort of a reinvention of um, what menus want to be. So for example, I can go in here, um, this is the GIMP, which you may be familiar with. Um, let me just make a new file. And then, so there's a bunch of menus up here, lots and lots and lots of stuff. But say, for example, I just wanted to add some transparency. Um, there we go, layer transparency, add alpha channel, great. Voila. So we made this super productive interface to, to menus, and uh, people love it. And this is just the, the first version, but as we, as we roll it out, it's, uh, it's, it's getting really colorful um, in the labs, and uh, 1210 is going to be awesome. Um, so, so the desktop is really shaped up. We've leapt ahead of many of the competition in, in interesting ways, um, but there's still sort of some core things for us to do. Um, and one of the biggest of those, I think, is, is figuring out how we're going to embrace the web. Um, uh, let me skip over this. The story here is this font that we built is kind of amazing. Every, every line there has a, a precise mathematical formulation. And, um, and in the tablet interface, the theme for the tablet interface, every visual element um, echoes the mathematics of that font in a very precise way. So it gives the whole thing this fantastic um, cohesion. Oh, yes, I, I need to tell you. Um, you may have seen the announcement, but Dell is going to start pre-installing Ubuntu in the North American market on this very beautiful laptop um, as part of Project Sputnik. So I want to thank the guys at Dell for leaping forward uh, and bringing Linux. <laughs> bringing Linux back not on the low end, uh, the what we affectionately call the crap tops, but on the high end, Ultrabooks. Um, uh, beauty, the, uh, the Dell guys talk about Beauty and the Beast, their top two developer environments, and we believe both of those will ship with Ubuntu as an option. You'll be able to choose on Dell.com, Windows, or Ubuntu. It's going to be great. Um, they're also going to take Ubuntu into retail, so this is happening now in China. You can go into a store and you'll see retail stuff. Electronic Arts has started pushing games to Ubuntu, and Valve have said that they're going to port Steam. Um, I know that we're all about the serious business of development, but Everybody's got to blow off a little steam. So what's next? Well, we want to embrace the web, and we want to make the web a first-class citizen on the desktop. We have this fantastic desktop. It's more productive than anything you could do if you were limited just to a browser. Um, but we still want to mash up the web and the desktop and make it like an amazing environment. So what would that look like? Well, if the web was a first-class desktop, then I could have an application like Gmail. So let's have OK. Um, and if it was a first-class application, then uh, so we've got some nice multi-touch stuff going on over here. Um, uh, if it was a first-class application, it would show up not in the browser, not trapped in the browser, but down here like this on this uh, on this launcher. Um, there it is. Um, and uh, if if it was if if it was a really cool environment, I could do sort of example last FM as an application, and again that would show itself up in the launcher, I could go in here, get a little bit of this going on. They're probably gonna play me an ad, so I'm going to mute myself. I'm just gonna go mute like that. And I just muted the environment. I love the HUD, it's amazing. So, um, ooh, let's see. Maybe I just need to, how do I love the Bieber? It is playing an ad. So let's go to Gmail. Well, again, if it was a first-class app, we have this amazing HUD thing, right? So go away. Um, they have this amazing HUD thing. So wouldn't it be cool if web apps could express themselves into the HUD too? So they could just skip that whole menus thing. Um, so I'd want to do something like this, compose email, and voila, there we go. So just so you understand what that is. That is a website that is putting itself in the launcher. Um, if I have a new new message from Gmail, it shows up here. Um, there's Gmail over there. Um, I can I can use it like an application. I don't need menus. I have the HUD, so the web app can express itself fully into the shell. Um, be completely environment. I am 
officially professionally out of time, but I hope you have a fantastic conference. Thanks very much, and uh, enjoy 1210. It's going to be awesome. Thanks so much.